Pastor Caleb Way. This is Pastor Keith Piotr, and tonight uh, is a huge night for our Faith 201 now Faith 301 students as uh, they will be invited to come to the Lord's table for the very first time. Uh, I'm super excited. I got to teach them all this year, and whether they like it or not, I think we had a good time and learned a lot this year. Uh, so I'm excited to welcome them uh, to the table tonight when they receive God's gifts of grace. Uh, traditionally, this will be done on Monday, Thursday, which obviously did not happen this year. Uh, but tonight, we're kind of going to treat this like Monday, Thursday. It's why we're dressed in red. It's where the Holy Spirit is working, and the readings are kind of the ones we'd expect on Monday, Thursday, as well as uh, the sermon will be. And this is actually the first time we're having to meet with more than 20 people in our sanctuary. So this is actually a big evening for us here at Our Savior, uh, and we're going to see how it goes. Uh, and I'm sure it'll go well. Pastor Keith, before we commune, we'll kind of explain the procedures. Uh, we will take all of the safety procedures and precautions that we believe are necessary. Uh, but with that, it's just good to be together. Uh, Faith 201 tonight is for you, as we'll hear more about uh, this evening. So let's stand and sing our opening hymn. <laughs> Sins assured that for the sake. 
sake of Jesus' sacrificial uh, death, forgiveness is freely available in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. And so we pray. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we have forgotten how much you love us, and at times wondered about your plans for us. We have forgotten to love our neighbors as ourselves, and instead in our thoughts, words, and deeds, we have put our own interests first. We have forgotten that we are sinful from birth, and have bound to sin.
He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our sermon. Peculiar. 
earlier nights in Jerusalem. See, it had already been four days since Jesus had entered into town. But a crowd of people laying palm branches in the garments down at his feet, saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, in the highest, as he entered in on the back of the colt. The cheers of, of blessed be the name of the Lord. See, this is almost like it had happened weeks or months ago. And so much, so much had happened since Jesus entered into town on that first Palm Sunday. See, Jesus had been busy that week, cleaning, cleansing the temple, right? clearing out those money changers, treating God's holy house as a marketplace, telling them this is a den of thieves. And that week, religious leaders had already tried to attract Jesus to have him arrested and silenced for teaching about the kingdom of God. And while evading their plots, Jesus continued to teach. He taught in parables. And he continued to prophesy about the coming reign of the Lord. Continue to, to prophesy and tell the future about his death. And all of this was happening while the town was buzzing. People were coming in from all over the place because this was the week of Passover. The high holiday. The Passover. And if you're not familiar with it, it was that, that yearly celebration that, that brings the Jewish people all the way back to Egypt. All the way back to Moses when, when the angel of death passed over the houses of the Israelites and led to their deliverance. Remember the, the doorposts? Uh, marked with lamb's blood with a hyssop branch. The, the, the lamb that was then cooked and they sat down in the dark with candles lit and they feasted. They were delivered. So this Passover night was a night for the Jews to celebrate. And they would do it every single year. Think, think Christmas. Think Easter. A feast. All of your friends and family together. Good food. Good drink. There's music playing. There's dancing. There's singing. There's remembrance. We, we remember Christ's birth. We remember his resurrection. But on this night, the Israelites would remember their deliverance. The deliverance from the bondage of slavery. That is what they were celebrating on this strange Passover evening. A remembrance of freedom. Of the sacrificial land of the blood on wood, and of course, the best part, the meal. It's this night that Jesus gathered with his disciples in some upper room in Jerusalem. And it was this story that was on their minds. Remember Moses in the Red Sea, Pharaoh's chariots being wiped away by the water, this was the story. And then they remembered God's everlasting covenant with, with them, his people. The covenant that God made with Abraham so long ago, the covenant that was a simple contract, a simple agreement. Do as I say, people, and I will be your God, and you will be my children. That God will forgive them. And he would give them a way to do it through the sacrifices that they would offer. But this Passover night, this Monday, Thursday, something seemed different. So let's think back to that night. As Jesus gathered them around, he first did something strange. He grabbed a bucket of water and a towel and he knelt down at their feet. And then he washed them. It's a service work. Not work for the King of Kings, for the Lord of the Lords. But he 
and so he continued to teach them. But, but the most unsettling thing that happened, think back with me that night, was when Christ predicts his betrayal. Christ says, one of you at this table, one of my friends, one of the people I love, the people who have followed me around, one of you will betray me. And of course, the disciples began to question their devotion to Jesus, and they began to talk amongst themselves, and, and kind of finger pointing at each other, and saying, it won't be me, Lord, I love you, Lord. And finally, Jesus points out this unfortunate soul. And he says, it's the one who is dipping his hand in the bowl along with him. Judas. Go. No. Do what you have stopped and planned to do. And Judas, I can assume, rather dejected, gets up from the table and hangs his head low, storms out of the upper room, and off he goes to betray the son. But it was this night, this meal, when Christ gave them his last will, his last gift to his disciples. His last testament. Take and eat. Take and drink. And now you, all of you, if you might be able to one student is maybe sitting there wondering why, why does all this matter? Or why does this night, Monday, Thursday, and all of its peculiarity and weirdness matter to us? Here in 2020 in America. Why, why do we gather? Why, why have we made such a big deal about communion, the Lord's Supper? Why does it matter so much? Why did you, Pastor Caleb, make us and a parent come and sit in here and listen to you talk about communion for two Sundays in a row? Why do you so excited about this? A meal that we kind of look at and say, bread? Really? That's it? Ultimately, you might be asking what this night, so many years ago, means for me. What does that have to do with me? My answer for you is simple. It has everything to do with you. It matters because all of this, this whole strange night in the upper room, the, the whole holy week narrative of Christ going to the cross, the, the triumphal entry, the last supper, his death on the cross, it was all for you. It was on this night that Christ has made a new covenant. One that will be ratified by the shedding of his blood on the cross for, for many. But more importantly, for you. And it's remarkable to think about this. To think about the God who created everything. He, he laid the foundations of the earth. He was there before there was. This God has made a covenant. You guys remember what a covenant is, right? Some nods, some like stairs. An agreement, a contract. Think of signing day. You get a covenant for you. See, it's something extremely hard to believe, actually, that such a mighty and, and righteous God would do such a thing with miserable sinners like ourselves. But this meal, this gift, this forgiveness is for you. It's for you. It's for you. You have put so many things before God. It's for you. Who disobey your parents from time to time? They all hear an aspect. It's for you who, who didn't do your homework assignment even though you were asked to. It's for you. Who, who 
who lied, who cheated, maybe, who stole the that candy bar I talked to you all about. It's for you, who maybe are harboring hate in your hearts. It's for every one of you who, who cannot grasp it and who maybe doubt God's promises. It's for you. It's for me. It's for us. It's for all sinners who have fallen short. And I know that it can be easy to doubt God's good grace. It can be easy to just say that we believe it, but, but really they are only empty words. It's easy to just come to church on Sunday, focus on other things, on our jobs, right? our sports, our, our schoolwork, our homework, our fantasy football team. Our money. But we've all been there. Right? We're, we're present in worship physically, but, but mentally you're out here just elsewhere. Uh, ask the parents. Right? Maybe they did experience a time when they have come to the rail to receive God's good gifts that seems like just another thing. Going through the motions. Not really acknowledging the great gift we're about to receive. Or maybe, maybe deep down we just feel like it's too good to be true. How could God, who has, who has created all things, who is fully righteous and fully holy, care, love, a low life like me, I say these things because I've been there. Sometimes I am still there. But tonight, this night, as we remember that holy night when Christ gave us his last will and testament, it is a night for you. That we get to experience God's great love for us. It's a night where all doubts can be put aside, put in the closet, door slammed shut. It's a night where we get to experience, actually experience the forgiveness of sins. And it's a night where we get to touch it with our hands. We get to taste it on our tongues. We get to eat and drink it. As we gather this evening, we're not just here sitting back and listening to this event unfold from afar where Christ instituted his supper. But tonight we're not spectators. No, tonight, you, all of you, get to partake and join in with Christ. In the upper room. Tonight we get to come to this table. We get to reach out with, with our hands that are starving. We need to receive Christ's body and blood that was shed. Guess what? For you. Come to the table. Come and partake in this peculiar meal. In this, this miraculous mystery, where we hear the words of Christ spoken directly to us. He says, Carla, he says, Maria, Riley, Ellie, Caroline, Amelia, Alyssa, Grace, Jacob. Olivia, Lexi, Grant. Oh, I started something I had to finish now. <laughs> I think that's all. I didn't say her name, but Ah, Elise! <laughs> you too, Elise. She just says, This is for you. 
for the forgiveness of all your sins. See, this is not something we earn, my brothers and sisters. It's not something we must do to get closer to God. It right? doesn't depend on how many services we attend or how many friends we might have brought to church. All Christ asks is that we come and believe in the words he has spoken. This is my body. This is my blood. For the forgiveness of your sins. <laughs> Don't let these words burden you. No, take comfort in them. No matter what you have gone on in your life, no matter what is happening in this moment in your life, whatever's going on in your mind, set it aside and hear these words and take comfort in Christ's forgiveness. Whether you're de dealing with anxiety, with all that's going on in our world, whether you are dealing with, with medical issues, or marital struggles, overwhelming stress, or, or you're just having a hard time coping with change, whether you're just hunting the burden of financial struggle, or maybe you're dealing with the loss of someone you love, Set it aside. Because know that in a few moments you will be invited to come to this table by Christ Himself, where, where you will lay your burdens on Him. To you, my brothers and sisters who are, who are taking this on for the first time, it is my joy to invite you on behalf of Christ to come to this table. Where you join and live in the fellowship of the saints, with your brothers and sisters, with your, with your parents beside you. And I invite you to whatever is going on in your life, whatever struggles you are dealing with, put them on Jesus. Put them on Christ. So come, brothers and sisters. Amongst the noisiness of this life, let this night be one that you remember. Remember all of the, the things that Christ willingly went through. His abandonment by all of his friends, his trials that he had to endure, his suffering, his crucifixion, his death, all of this for you tonight, Faith 201. Remember, forever, remember this forever. Every day, every week, every morning, year after year, remember these words that Christ poured out his body and his blood.
that love you from fabulous families, from parents who get it, who are uh, uh, at the receiving end of your grace. And we can celebrate this night here uh, together. We come to your table as the hymn writer reminds us, weak and weary, we come unworthy, but we come because there is no other higher gift that we can inherit. So as we come, we empty ourselves before you, and we know we walk away with a smile on our face that this powerful uh, word connected with bread and wine truly does what Jesus says it's going to do. Remember your mercy, O Lord. Remember your steadfast love. So we take the opportunity as a faith family to hold one another up. Uh, people going through hard times, uh, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, maybe with addictions, laid up in the hospital, facing surgeries, recovering from surgeries, or for those who are grieving. Particularly today, these from our congregation and close family we've named before you, Mary Simons, hospitalized a second time with ongoing issues related to pneumonia and COVID. We pray for Louise Landis, who's battling a bad case of shingles in her 90s. We pray for Cameron Manila, 18-year-old recovering from a heart transplant. We pray for Marion Sletton, father of a friend of Linda Larson, visitor of our church who suffered a stroke on Monday. We pray at Thanksgiving along with Cora Sharp and family, her cousin Michael and the donor Josh, upon a successful liver transplant received and given on Wednesday. We pray for Kelly Enstrom, niece of Carol and Tom Meyer in Iowa City waiting a heart transplant. And for Linda Beardsley in ICU with internal bleeding, trying to figure out several serious health issues. And now these we name quietly in our hearts before you. Remember your mercy, O Lord. Remember your steadfast love. Two families who are grieving, Heavenly Father, we hold before you for your comforting hand and heart. First of all, for a former member, Kurt Tesh, who just in his 50s passed away this week following a heroic battle with brain cancer. Tesh family. We pray for Lori and Ron Spiva and family. Upon the passing of Daryl Fromm, Lori's dad, longtime member of our Savior, going to be with his bride in heaven just this afternoon. Lord, wrap your loving arms around these families, comfort them in their grief, and assure them and uplift them the glorious news of new life that exists immediately to be with you and to prepare for that glorious reunion that awaits all who cling to you and remain faithful to the point of death. Remember your mercy, O Lord. Remember your steadfast love. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all from whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we then prepare ourselves for the special sacraments and intentions of our confirmation. Now I will ask you some questions and I will instruct 
to uh, have an answer if this is what you desire to do. Do you, faithful one, believe that in the Lord's Supper you really and truly receive the very body and blood of Jesus as you also receive the bread and the wine? If so, answer confidently, yes, I believe. Do you believe that as you receive Christ's body and blood, along with the bread and wine, that God personally forgives your sins? If so, answer together, saying, yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. Do you believe the Holy Spirit works through this special means of grace to strengthen your faith? If so, answer, yes, I believe. Do you intend to remain faithful as a child of God through regular worship attendance, the study of God's Word personally and with other Christians, and to complete Faith 301? If so, answer, yes, with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. Having made public profession of your belief in what God teaches in His Word about the Lord's Supper, and having stated your intentions to be faithful to Him and to the use of the means of grace, Jesus welcomes you to join us, your faith family, and your parents at his table to receive this wonderful gift of his grace. I'll now ask the parents of these young people to please stand. Having heard your children state their desire to be faithful in the word and the sacrament, will you help your children keep their commitments and will you demonstrate with your life what it means to be faithful in worship? the study of God's word, and reception of the sacrament? If so, answer, yes, with the help of God. Yes, yes, yes. with the help of God. God is with you to enable you to keep these promises you have made. Let us all stand with these young people and their parents as we pray together the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
you'll dispense that cup in the basket to the right there, as then you return it to your place in the pew. And then we'll come around and we'll do this side. There's not a whole lot of it of us, so this should go pretty well. So I think everyone's got it, right? Let's, let's give it a shot. First, it's a joy for me to be able to speak these words that our Lord first spoke on the night that Pastor Caleb was speaking about on the night that he was betrayed.
keeping you steadfast in that hope and in that joy until life everlasting. Amen. I'd invite you to stand as we prepare to close our time in worship with the final uh, spoken blessing. And then especially this last hymn is beautiful. We'll sing it as a blessing to these new communicant uh, members of our church. The Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be and abide with you now and always. Amen.
And so we're all kind of heavy hearted about that. Obviously have no plans yet, but watch your email. Members, watch your email, because uh, the funeral will be here sometime this particular week, and I'm sure uh, some of you really want to know about that, so just watch that really carefully. Hey, we entered to worship. We entered to worship. 